Just wrapped up Saturday morning long run, 30 miles in three hours, 58 minutes, a 7.57 minute per mile pace. And as you can see at the bottom there, total weekly mileage is 75.75 miles. So right now we're about seven weeks out from the Rocky Raccoon 100 miler, which is the first week of February and Training is going well. I'm feeling really good. This was a, a really solid week in terms of volume, uh, in terms of adding in some speed work again, some fart licks, just some up tempo running. And I can tell my paces are coming down a little bit while maintaining a heart rate that's still in an aerobic zone under my max aerobic heart rate. Solid day, solid run, 30 miles, I'm tired. So, some of the final pieces for the poll have been arriving the past couple weeks. The goal was originally to have the poll done in the summer. That didn't happen. Now the goal is to have it done in the next 13 days, which is Christmas. But I don't think that's going to happen either. So I'll show you the progress. It's been a while since I gave you guys an update on our backyard situation. Now this past week, this has been constructed. This is the bathroom, bar, and pool house, which is kind of right at the edge of the deep end here. The roof needs to go on, the electrical has been done, it's close. Once that's done, they can put the stamped overlay on the remaining concrete, and then they have to put the pebble in the actual pool, we're making some good progress. Back behind the pool house, all the pipes run to where the pumps are gonna be and we can easily access that. And then on this side of the pool house is the bathroom, just so that people can use the bathroom when they're using the pool, they don't have to go back in the house. If I'm at the corner of the deep end here, which that looks fabulous, I would swim in that right now, moves into where there's gonna be a, a bar built here with a sink and a little fridge. And then on the other side of the yard is the fire pit. And the fire pit empties into the shallow end of the pool. And that's where we're at right now. The question is, when we first started hanging out, not even dating, <laughs> what did my apartment smell like? It smelled like an apple cinnamon glade plug-in. And it made me want to throw up and never date you again. <laughs> yep, I came home, all my clothes smelled like it. All my everything smelled like it. And quickly, that stops, didn't it? It did. Thank you. So the first time I knew Steph was coming to my apartment, and this was 2017, I wanted to impress her. And I knew it probably smelled like gym clothes and beef. So I put Glade plugins in every single outlet in an apple cinnamon scent. I tell that story because right now Steph has a pot potpourri on the stove that smells a whole lot better than a million Glade plugins. And I want to share it with you guys because it smells delicious. Now, obviously, potpourri is a play on words of potpourri, but you just put all of this stuff in a pot and you put it on a low heat on your stovetop, like two to three cups of water, and the aroma releases and smells up your entire house and it smells delicious. So in this, in addition to the water, is cranberries, rosemary, orange slices, and then... This stuff right here, a little bit of vanilla extract, some cinnamon sticks, some whole cloves, and whole allspice. You throw it all in a pot like that, and it just smells, it smells so good. The entire house smells good. extremely efficient with my time. So if I know I have a free 15 minutes before going on my run, 
that I can knock out some things, like catching up on an audiobook, answering some emails, folding laundry that was in the dryer the night before. So if I have five, 10, 15 minutes here and there to knock stuff out, that's when I try to get these things done that don't require much deep work or deep thinking. It's just routine, like folding boxers. You know, this is what I love about Texas. It is the middle of December. It's probably 62, 63 degrees this morning, and I can run shirtless. But this morning, I have a speed workout. I'm adding one up-tempo workout a week to my training right now, kind of in preparation to transition into marathon prep after ultra prep. So once a week, it's typically on a Tuesday, I'm either just doing like a fart lick or an up-tempo. Uh, like today, I'll probably do a two mile warm up, and then two minutes on, two minutes off, two minutes on, two minutes off. And I'll do that for about five to six miles, and I'll have a few mile cool down. The intent is just on that on, I'll be running around probably a 645, seven minute per mile pace. And on the off, I'll be dropping back to like an 830 minute per mile pace. So that's the, the focus today. One speed work, Moving forward each week, either up tempo, track, fart lick, just getting the legs moving a little faster. That weather was perfect. There's like moisture in the air the entire time. 9.25 miles in one hour, nine minutes, 29 seconds at a 731 minute per mile pace. One thing I do highly recommend is always keeping at least one speed workout in your training as a runner. Whether you're prepping for a race or not prepping for a race, keeps the legs fresh. It's a good change of pace just from doing long, slow, aerobic runs. Like for, for runs like this today, I don't wear a chest strap. I don't monitor heart rate. I just go based off of perceived effort and trying to hit some paces and have fun with it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So I've got some good news. The field bar, it's coming back. And it's coming back better than ever. We've been out of the field bar the past couple months because we had trouble sourcing a reliable manufacturer. So we sourced a new nutrition bar manufacturer through our protein supplier, Glamby Nutritionals. And next month, towards the end of January, we are relaunching the field bar and better than ever. So we're launching the regular whey-based bar but we're also launching a plant-based field bar. We made some changes to the ingredients. So we cut some of the honey and we added dates and we replaced the chocolate chips with cacao nibs. Peanut butter, honey, milk protein isolate, whey protein isolate, dates, cacao nibs, shredded coconut, coconut oil, and natural flavors. For the plant-based field bar, we have a peanut butter crunch and a chocolate sea salt. This is probably my favorite bar I've ever had in my entire life. I eat one or two of these a day. Peanut butter, peanut flour, dates, peanuts, agave syrup, pumpkin seeds, tapioca syrup, cacao nibs, coconut oil, pea protein, and sea salt. Launching towards the end of January in the traditional whey bar and now a plant-based field bar. Hope you guys are excited. And I'm so happy with the way the branding and the packaging turned out. So for this one right here, this is what this bar looks like. You can see kind of the foil and the texture that shines through when you move it in the light. The green obviously represents plant-based. Red is the normal whey-based bar. And on the back here, you can see Gil One More that shines through. 
and you position it beautiful. Let's talk about change. Change has been on my mind a lot lately because 2022 is going to be filled with a lot of change for us. I mean, right now we're in our new warehouse expansion, which we're about to bring in more inventory. We had our first shipment dropped off this past week in preparation for wholesale and retail accounts. But I truly appreciate and embrace change. Now, I believe change is required on a regular and consistent basis to initiate progress. However, change does not guarantee progress. For the longest time, I have... I've been a fan of change. And when you implement change that is strategic and intentional, it improves your chances of making progress. But just because you're making change in something in your life and in your business and your fitness and towards your goals, if it's not strategic and intentional, you're just you're spinning your wheels, wishing that that change creates some sort of progress, which sometimes it, it really does not. And the argument for me is that a lot of people think that change has to be uncomfortable. And when I think about this, I, I have to disagree. Because me personally, I, I embrace change so much. I'm always looking to change something to make improvements and make progress that I am more comfortable with change than without change. For me, I find comfort in changing things and forcing myself to grow and adapt and, and make progress. And I'm uncomfortable when I'm not, when I'm just sitting and I'm stale and I'm, I'm in this like plateau. To embrace change and see it as an opportunity to make progress, it's powerful. And that's why I'm always changing something. 2022 for us at BPN is going to be filled with massive changes. And myself and Trey, our VP of marketing, we've been sitting down the past couple weeks and just strategically thinking about all the changes we're going to make that will initiate progress for the brand and for the team. Embrace change. It is not and doesn't have to be uncomfortable, but find comfort in it. That's, that's what I do. And it's been great for me. Today is a lower body strength training day and I like stacking this day on top of the same day I'm doing speed work. Started doing this back in Ironman prep about a year ago and really enjoyed it. So like we would go downtown Austin, either do a, a tempo workout, threshold workout or track workout with Jeff Cunningham and the team. And then in the evening I would do barbell squats and lower body strength. Really just fell into that rhythm and enjoyed it. Everyone's different. Uh, it is a big output day in terms of just faster paces, higher heart rate in the morning, and then putting some, some weight on the bar in the evening. You'll feel it the next day for sure. Like Wednesdays and Thursdays, central nervous system, muscles a little bit more taxed, but then going into the weekend for my long run, I feel pretty good. So let's squat heavy today. Recently, what I've been doing for a warm up is a few strides, like four to six strides on the assault runner. I'll start slow and then I'll slowly ramp up to, I'd say an RPE, a rate of perceived effort eight to nine, and then I'll stop, I'll rest a little bit, heart rate gets up, breathing increases, breathing rate increases, and I just feel more primed going into a, a strength training session. So we'll get a few of these strides in, start out nice and easy, pick up the speed, but feel it out.
365, this will be the top set. Maybe, for three reps. I made a post on Instagram a few weeks ago talking about this, but for the last 12 months or so, I had been squatting without shoes, barefoot. And the 10 years before that, I couldn't do barbell squats in anything but Ollie shoes, Olympic lifting shoes, which are a hard platform and your heel sits higher than your toe. Sometimes you'll see lifters will put like a five pound plate under their heel when they're barbell squatting because they might lack hip and ankle mobility. And then when I transitioned to barefoot barbell squats, everything felt better. It felt stronger. I felt like I was, I was pushing from a more solid base. If you would have told me that 10 years ago, I would say no way. I couldn't get into that position because of a lack of hip and ankle mobility. 365 was not the top set. 385 will be the top set. You know, it's a nostalgic feeling, wrapping up a workout and leaving the HQ after a long day and it's dark. And it takes me back to like 2017, it was me, Preston, and Joe in the early stages of building BPN when it was a, a 6,000 square foot warehouse at 2590 Oakmont Drive, suite 420, which is actually right down the road. And now, here we are at the HQ. Man. Man. I'm just in some feels right now, just thinking about it. Thinking about the journey and the years. Change is necessary. Change is necessary for progress. But just because you implement change doesn't mean you will achieve progress. It's gotta be strategic. It's gotta be intentional. It's gotta be on purpose. Now, speaking of memories, here it is. Here is the original BPN HQ. These two bay doors right here. And we had from the corner over there to right here. It was 6,000 square feet. And it feels like just yesterday. I used to do barbell squats on this road right here.